An unresponsive child of age 2 years is rushed to the casualty with a history of fall from height. So, that is a trauma patient. On examination, he is responsive to verbal stimuli intermittently. Respiratory rate is 30 per minute, pulse 130, saturation is 94 and BP is 104 by 60. According to you, what should be the next step of management? Let us have a look at the options. We have four options here. Let us look at these options one by one and try to see what is happening. Now, the child is unresponsive right so something is wrong with the child so only observing the child carefully and shifting if necessary cannot be the answer it is an unresponsive child he has a history of fall from height he is responsive to verbal stimuli intermittently so he is not totally in a, the best of cognition respiratory rate is 30 per minute okay we can take it uh, to be not to be a uh, uh, tachypneic pulse is 130 per minute pulse 130 per minute means uh, it can be due to pain, it can be due to some underlying bleeding, it can be due to uh, just a normal sympathetic response to the trauma as well. But the important thing is there is no bradycardia present here. Saturation is 94%, so the patient is hypoxemic. So, hypoxia is also present in the child, right? And BP is 104 by 60, so there is no significant hypertension. According to you, what should be the next step of management in the child? So, uh, starting oxygen by a face mask and giving mannitol is not correct here. Is there any, why would you give mannitol? Is there any evidence of raised intracranial pressure in the child? There are no unequal pupils, there is no uh, presence of UM in signs, there is no cranial palsy, there is no Cushing, if you think of Cushing reflex to be there or Cushing triad to be there, there is no irregular respiration, there is no bradycardia in this child. Low GCS can be due to a variety of reasons. In fact, there is tachycardia in the patient. So, uh, option D looks less likely to be the answer here because when you give mannitol again, mannitol is going to cause a lot of problems. It is also going to cause hypotension. There is a possibility that the child may be bleeding inside, right? There is tachycardia present in the child. And if you give mannitol, it is going to worsen. It is going to cause uh, a precipitous fall in the BP. So, unless you have a objective evidence or strong clinical suspicion of raised ICP, you are not going to give mannitol in the patient. Then we are left with option number B and C. Now, option B says transfer immediately to a tertiary center for CT brain and further management. Okay, CT brain is fine. What about hypoxia? What about hypoxia? You can't, on room air, the child's saturation is 94%. You can't leave the child like that. You need to give oxygen support to the child. So, option B also looks to be not the most appropriate thing. But we are left with option number C. You start oxygen by face mask, right, which is appropriate thing. Immobilize the cervical spine, extremely important in any trauma patient. Uh, cervical spine immobilization along with airway breathing circulation is mandatory. And transfer to a tertiary center accompanied by a doctor. When you say accompanied by a doctor, we assume that the patient will be well equipped, the, the doctor will be well equipped with instruments and if needed, he or she will be able to do intubation or basic life res uh, resuscitation measures, CPR, etc. on the way. So, the most appropriate answer to this question is C, that is face mask, uh, oxygen, immobilization of cervical spine and immediate transfer to the nearest center accompanied by a doctor. Now, questions like these, you cannot, you know, easily solve on the basis of Thank you.